Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create split screen as well as how to control two different objects in the scene with one device, in this case, the keyboard. And we'll be doing this through the use of Unity's player input functionality. This is part four of our advancing rollerball tutorial. If you haven't watched the previous parts, be sure to check that out. As well as if you haven't watched Unity's rollerball tutorial, the end of that tutorial is where this series starts, so be sure to check that out as well. I will link the playlist for this series as well as Unity's tutorial in the description below. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is adjust our input action. So this was created inside of Unity's Rollerball tutorial. So if you remember, you created an input folder and inside this is the input action from that tutorial. So we're going to go ahead and open this up and I'm just going to stick the window here and we're going to adjust it slightly. So we're going to go over to all control schemes and click on it. And then we're going to add a control scheme and we're going to call this WASD. We're going to add a list to it, and we're going to tie it to our keyboard, and we're going to make it optional. We're going to click Save, and then we're going to do this one more time. So add control scheme. This one is going to be called Arrows. We're going to tie it to the keyboard. We're going to do Optional and click Save. And then we're going to go back up, and we're going to go ahead and set it back to all control schemes. Now that we've created those two control schemes, we're gonna go over to our actions and we're gonna drop down this move portion and we're gonna drop down the WASD. So again, this was created in Unity's Rollerball tutorial series and we're just going to adjust it slightly. So all these things are tied to our keyboard and we want them to stay tied to the keyboard, but we wanna change the control scheme that they're tied to. So in Unity's, it was tied to this control scheme, mouse and keyboard but we want it to be separate so that way we can have one of our players tied to the WASD and one of our players tied to the arrows so that way you can have two different schemes for our two different objects so that way WASD doesn't control both players and we can separate who we want to be in the WASD and who we want to be controlled by the arrows. So we're going to go ahead and click on the scheme we want for each of these inputs. So we're going to get rid of the keyboard and mouse for all of them and then W is WASD and then up is arrows, and we'll just continue this through all of these inputs. And then I'm just going to run through and double check that I got them all. And it looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and save this by clicking Save Asset, and then we're going to go back to our scene. And so what we want to do is take our player and be able to instantiate it into the scene while tying it to one of those control schemes. And so the way to do this is through Unity's player input instantiate. And so it needs a prefab for that. So to go ahead and create this prefab, I'm going to create an empty object because we're going to have a player as well as a camera inside this prefab. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this player object. And then I'm going to set this to 0, 0, 0. And then what I'm going to do is take our player up here, drag it into the player object. And then I'm going to take our main camera and drag it in as well. And then we want to go back to our player and scroll down to this player input. And we want to drag our camera into that. And as you can see, this default scheme says any, we're going to leave it as any because we're going to instantiate our objects in through a script and we'll set the control scheme there. And so now that the player input's good, we're going to go back to our camera and we're going to go down and I'm going to disable the audio listener because if you have an audio listener both on player one and player two, you'll get a warning inside your console saying that you can't have two audio listeners in the scene. And so I'm going to disable it here and then enable it on the first player whenever we instantiate them inside of our script. You could also attach it to something else in the scene, or you could even delete this component from the camera and then inside your script, create that component for just player one or for just player two. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and go to our prefabs folder. And I'm going to take this player object and drag it down into here. And then I'm going to delete our player object from the scene. And then if you ever want to mess with or edit this prefab, you just click on it inside of the project window and then go up to open prefab 
and you can see all of its things here. So now we can go ahead and back out of this and we're going to go to our scripts and we're going to create a new script and I'm going to call this initial spawn. And then we can go ahead and open that. And what we're going to be doing inside of this script is spawning in both of our players, adjusting some components, and creating our split screen. So we're not going to use update in here, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then what we're going to need is a reference to our player prefab, so I'm going to go ahead and do public, so that way we can set it inside the inspector. And then this is going to be a game object, and I'm going to call this game object just prefab. If you're going to have multiple prefabs inside this initial spawn script, then you might want to call it player prefab or something more distinctive. And now we can go ahead and go inside of start and we can go ahead and create player one. So I'm going to do var and var just means that we're allowing the code to determine the type of variable that this is going to be. And then we're going to do player one and we're going to set it equal to player input, which we need a using for. So we're going to go up here real quick and just do using unity engine dot input system. And now we can go back here and now if we type player input it'll pop up and then we can do dot instantiate and then the first thing that it's going to want is our prefab so we can go ahead and put that there and then the next thing is going to be its player index this is our first player so we're going to give it an index of zero it's the first in the array and then it's going to want our scheme which was wasd is what we're going to give to our first one or if you'd prefer your first player to be the arrow keys you would put arrows here and then next is going to be the split screen index so i'm going to do zero and then finally it's the device we're going to use our keyboard for both players so we're going to do keyboard dot current and this is just going to take the keyboard that's currently plugged in and set that to be the device that controls this player along with that WASD scheme. And now we can just go ahead and copy paste this and I'm going to do the same for player two. So I'm going to adjust the name, the prefab's the same, and the scheme is going to be different. And the index will be one and the split screen will be one. So now we've created both player one and player two, and now we just need to adjust some things. So the first thing we're going to adjust is going to be its position. So we're gonna take that player one, which is a player input, and then we're gonna get its transform, and then we're gonna get the position of that transform, and then we're gonna give it a new vector three. And so I'm just gonna have the player one be a little to the left and player two be a little to the right. So I'm just gonna do negative two in the X. We want it to be that 0.5 in the Y, which is what it is in the scene currently. And then we'll just do zero in the Z. And then again, we can copy paste this or you can retype it. And then we're gonna change this to player two. And then I'm just gonna get rid of this negative so that way it's two units to the right instead of two units to the left. And next what we wanna do is get our cameras and go ahead and set that so it's split screened. So we're gonna get player one. We're gonna get the transform of player one because again, this player one is the player input that's returned from this function. And so after we've gotten that transform, what we wanna do is actually get the parent. And the reason we're getting the parent is because this transform is what the player input's attached to, which in our case is the player. And so in order to access the camera, we need to access that player object above the player. So that way we can access the camera, which is also a child of that player object. So to go ahead and show you that real quick instead of with words, if we go back to our prefabs and open up this player object, our player right here, which is a child of player object, has this player input, which we're getting when we instantiate this prefab. And this is the transform for that, the player. And so in order to access this camera, we need to go up to the parent of the player, this player object, and then go to the second child of that transform, which is the camera. So hopefully that made sense. That was a lot of parent and child being said, but that's why we're doing transform parent, and then why we're going to do get child, 
but we want to get the second child. Our transform is the first. So now we're getting the camera child, which is at index of one. The player child would be at index of zero. And then we're going to go ahead and get component. And the component we want from this child is the camera. And then we want to get its rect. And this rect, if we go back to the scene and look at the camera, is right here, this viewport. And so what we're going to want is for it to be half of the screen. So you can see if I change this to 0.5, it's half of the screen there. And then whenever you change this value, it will move it either to the left or right of the screen, as well as if you were to change these. But we're going to split screen it this way. So it's going to have player one on this side and player two on this side. So now back inside the script, we can go ahead and create a new rect. And we want to adjust the X and the width. So we want to use this one. So the float of X and Y, the float of width and height. So for this one, we're going to do zero in the X. This is going to be our player one, which will be on the left side of the screen. We're going to do zero in the Y. Our width is going to be 0.5 as it's going to take up half the screen. And our height is going to be one because we want it to be the full height of the screen. And then we're going to copy paste this and adjust it for player two. So all this child stuff will be the same because it's the exact same prefab. And the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to take this X position and set it to 0.5. So that way it starts halfway across the screen. So that way we have our split screen effect. And now finally, I mentioned before that the audio listeners are disabled and that I was going to enable it on player one. So I'm going to take player one, get its transform, get a component from that transform. This is going to be the audio listener. And now that we have that audio listener component, we're going to do enabled and we're going to make it equal to true. Again, we're just doing this for player one. So that way we don't get a warning that we have two audio listeners enabled in the scene. And that's everything we're going to be doing for our initial spawn. So we can go ahead and go back to the scene. And then we can go back on this prefab and then now that we're back in the main scene we can go ahead and attach this initial spawn script to something so i'm just going to attach it to our directional light and then we want to drag our prefab onto that prefab reference and we can go ahead and save and test and play and as you can see, we have a split screen here. Our player one is on the left. Our player two is on the right. If I use WASD, it moves player one. And if I use the arrow keys, it moves player two. As you can see, our text count has in fact broken. And you can see in the bottom corner that we're getting errors that we're not properly referencing things. This is because inside of our prefab, it's no longer referencing the things in the scene. So in next week's video, we'll be fixing those things back. But as a recap for this video, we used Unity's player input system. So that way we could have two different control schemes for two different players. And then we also used it to instantiate these players into the scene. And then we're able to change the player's camera components. So that way we could create a split screen. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We also stream games on Twitch Tuesday and Fridays. We have a game on the Google Play Store called Blast Off, and we have an asset pack of kids toys on the Unity Store. We have a Patreon with a YouTuber supporter tier, so if any of those things interest you or you would like to support us in any of those ways, I'll be sure to link all those things in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.